And I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld, and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Tonight we're talking about maintaining older cars, and as always, we'll be answering all of your car-related questions. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC, that's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is John Raymond, he's an industry consultant and APA advisor, and Chris Muir, he's our mechanic with AutoWorks in Oshawa. We'll be taking your calls this evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome back to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. We You're have, very yellow today. I'm, I'm a tulip. <laughs> <laughs> it's spring, finally. After what, frost a few nights ago and it's supposed to be and a long snow. weekend for planting. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not planting in my garage. You sent me an email yesterday that was interesting. Um, I did do that. We've been talking about the recall for the Takata airbags, which is so big nobody can even see all the ends it's of it. It's actually <laughs> the largest recall out there that's been out there for at least a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. It affects a variety of different vehicles, different brands, different models. And an interesting letter was sent in by a member of the APA from Honda, and that individual has one of the affected vehicles. He, it's 2007 through 2015, uh, certain model Hondas with mm -hmm. a Takata airbag. And if you read through the letter, uh, Honda says if you are concerned about driving your car because of potential explosion of the airbag and metal fragments Shrapnel. that could uh, <laughs> be flying around your car, not, not only uh, hitting you in the face or wherever, um, Honda will now compensate you for, uh, to be out of your vehicle and into something else. Okay, that's so, the first time we've seen something concrete for this because uh, let's back this up a little bit and rewind it. That airbag recall, they don't have enough airbags to replace them. Even correct. if they had the staff that could do it all because there's so many affected manufacturers it's crossing up almost every line. And so they don't have the parts, they're trying to make them. And the airbags, when they go off, the detonator is susceptible to moisture. Correct and it can go off at the wrong speed and there's fragments that can come out and they're like shrapnel. Yep. And yep. there's been deaths, there's been injuries and it, it's a big deal. So this recall is huge except nobody, they've issued the recall but they haven't said, what they're saying in Canada is just drive it till we get to you and people are understandably yeah, well, going. Essentially what they said in Canada is that um, the, the bulk of the recall is uh, in the US mm -hmm. and there hasn't been any affected um, claims so far in Canada. So therefore our level of risk is lower because most of these uh, events happened in southern US mm -hmm. with humidity and heat. Mm -hmm. So which um, we are coincidentally coming into so I understand why people are getting a little antsy if they've had this note. It's one thing to say, you know, you have a death bag in your steering wheel but don't worry about it. Correct. Uh. Well, <laughs> that's kind of like what it is. But I guess uh. the uh, the good news of a bad news story is that Honda stepped up yeah. to bat, communicated with their owners, yeah. and said, if you are unsure about driving your vehicle, contact your Honda dealer, and your Honda dealer will tell you the level of compensation to have you in alternate transportation, whether that's a rental car or something else. You could also go, in this case, on the Honda website, honda.ca, mm -hmm. and there's um, a section on their website about this. So. Uh, you know, we That's a big deal, yeah. We haven't seen anyone else step up like that. We should take off our hats that Honda actually went out and communicated with their owners in a timely fashion mm -hmm. and uh, took this step. Does this mean that other manufacturers are going to have to do something similar? Well, that's a good point. Whether they will or whether they won't, I think will depend uh, on A, their internal policies, but also uh, what sort of feedback Honda receives, whether it's in the press by people such as yourself mm -hmm. or owners that see this as a positive thing, mm -hmm. whether they take advantage of that or not. Well, I, I like that at least they're not putting their head up their butt, which is what some of the affected manufacturers are doing. Like, again, you can't do a recall like that. And it's terrifying when you read the headlines of what has happened in some places. And the fact we understand the recalls coming from the bottom up, it's in the southern US that they're actually putting all the resources right now. Correct. So we're at the outside 
Yeah, they're going, it's okay. And as you yeah. said, it's a huge problem because there's eight or nine years of production. There was one manufacturer. You can't go out and produce that mm -hmm. much of anything mm -hmm. immediately to solve that need and then schedule them in to the dealerships, get all the, the personnel. And so this will go on for quite a while. How long have they known about it, do you think? Because it seems every time there's a big recall or Volkswagen issue or something, they, as soon as they start digging, it goes back a decade, not 10 days. Like it's, well, in yeah. truth, the data is there because when th events like this happen, news either travels back to the dealership, which is the front line, mm -hmm. or through insurance company. But mm -hmm. by the time this data is compiled, analyzed, examined, Hidden. Hidden. <laughs> Not oh. told of. Yeah. Um, it takes a very long process. So there are definitely pockets of people in different areas, such as, in, let's say, insurance or a dealership that, well, you were in the dealership world. Mm -hmm. You knew about problems years before. Years before they surfaced as a recall. Really? Quite often, yeah. What's involved with changing out an airbag? It depends on the vehicle. Um, passenger side airbags tend to be a little, little bit harder. They're, they're integrated into the dash. Um, some of them are so, as simple as a, taking club box out, undoing a couple bolts, and then just removing the unit. Other ones, you have to take the entire dashboard off and separate it from the back of the dash pad. Steering wheel airbags are very, very simple. Uh, generally, you don't even have to take the steering wheel off. There's a couple bolts in the side or in the back of it, and that airbag comes right off. Are there cars that, I know sometimes um, cars like the one I own, which are entry level, you know, little $20,000 mm -hmm. car, if the airbags go off, they basically, insurance looks at them as kind of disposable, like once they're well, done. You have, um, they're like pinatas instead of cars, like they decide once they're broken, <laughs> <laughs> we can't put it back together. Is that? Well, if you take a look, let's take a 2016 Spark, which I think you were driving I just had one last week, yeah. 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 There are 10 airbags in that car. Wow. And the car starts out at ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah, Roughly that's true. ten thousand or no, nine yeah, ten thousand dollars. Nine 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 right. or nine 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 eight. If or whatever. you have a couple airbags that go off a uh, light front end collision, there goes four thousand dollars. So they're gonna scratch the yeah. the car. Yeah, it's a cute little car. Hmm. Ten airbags. Yeah, I guess so they're just like a match, right? Once they've been lit there it's cool. over. <laughs> well the cost of repair is so high. Yeah. And it's not only airbags now with uh, radar cruise control, HID headlamps, cars are being basically scrapped because in the uh, we're having accidents that really don't appear that bad, but in the um, in the old days we would have just repaired it and our, our next uh, guest could certainly talk about that. It's not like you can bang these things out like you used to be able to and uh, if it's an eighth of an inch off, ah, it's fine with adaptive cruise and uh, head sensing headlamps, radar, in the front bumpers, um, airbag sensors. Th they want everything to be nice and straight and level. And well, it's even. also like dropping your computer on the floor, though. A little bit, yeah. The screen might not break, but that computer is totally compromised yeah. and doesn't work. And I think that's kind of the... I've got people that'll say, I've, I've got a car, and it, you know, it's been in a collision, it looks okay to me, and again, we'll get to Chris on some of this for the external damage, but we've got so much internal stuff going on. Well, I mean, when those bags go off, they go off with an incredible amount of force. You can guarantee the steering wheel's dead because the airbag is part of it, or it's bent the rim itself. Um, it may have bent the dash pad beyond repair. It probably blew it the front window. The curtain bags have destroyed the trim. The side bolster bags in the seats have now destroyed the back of the, the seat. The pre-tensioners on the seat The pre-tensioners mean the seat belts have to re be replaced. What speed like, do they go off at? It depends. It depends on the severity of the, Im of the impact um, and what they're calibrated to. The older ones, uh, I believe, were slightly higher speed. The newer ones are. 30K or something? Or? 30. There's you can so say many 30K, yeah. You can say 30K, but if you run into a pillow truck at 30K, and don't hit any steel, it, they may not go off. Okay. If you run into a brick wall at 30K, you're gonna have the party. So right? be careful of the pillow trucks. Go looking Be careful for those. of the pillow trucks. <laughs> Choose the pillow know. truck. I couldn't think of anything <laughs> actually soft. Fence posts aren't soft, light standards, other cars. Yeah. Truck full of pillows, ah, oh, yeah, pillows. That would be okay. No. <laughs> as long as you don't hit the truck, just pillows. <laughs> Well, I, I did, my last week's column was about crash test dummies and how d basically they're all men. They're gauged on an average size guy mm -hmm. and they've got one female dummy who's four foot 11 and 108 pounds. She's in high demand. I called her Thumbelina. That's, mm -hmm. that is the female crash test dummy. Wow. There are, from the place that makes crash test dummies. That's the, in the catalog, that's the one. And most of the testing is predicated on men being in the driver's seat. 
And so a lot of times um, when those airbags go off, women are sitting closer. Mm -hmm. And we also have different centers of gravity and mm -hmm. we've got, we're closer to the pedals and things like that. So Don't they look who's driving? They do, they do as many tests as they can, but it's weighted towards men because men have more collisions. And it's, it, it's, I've told people, be careful those crash taste ratings because they're predicated on guys, mm -hmm. not women, even though they do them. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Onvik, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 800-968-7836.